Hi, in my last video, I went over how to generate XML from SQL tables using 4XML. For this video, I'll talk about and demonstrate how to load XML documents into SQL Server and then read from them like tables. The XML document that I'll be using in this is products.xml, which is generated from a query in my previous video. The document contains product subcategories along with the products within those categories. To load the document into SQL, use the open row set option. This will load the XML file into one large row set, into a single row and a single column. I've aliased the table, calling it products, and I've also aliased the column, calling it P. If I select from column P, it returns the document as binary data. This can be saved into an XML variable, which you can select from to see a readable XML document. Now that the XML document is in SQL, we can use the open XML function to read it. The open XML function allows an XML document to be treated like a table. It takes three parameters. The first one is a handle to the XML document. The second is the XPath reference, basically the XML tag hierarchy you want to select data from. And the third parameter is a flag. The main ones are values 1 and 2. Using 1 indicates that the fields you want to select from are attributes and a 2 indicates that the fields are elements. Within the width clause is where you specify the fields you want returned. Taking a look at the XML document again, we see that the subcategory tag has product subcategory ID and name. Let's use OpenXML to return their values. For the XPath reference, specify the path you want to query from. In this case, we're going to drill down to subcategories and then subcategory. The values we want to retrieve are from attributes, so we leave this flag as 1. Within the width clause, put the two attributes, product subcategory ID which we will return as an int and name which will return as a varchar 100. Before we can run this, we need the handle to the XML document. To get the handle, use the store procedure SP XML prepared document. This procedure takes two required parameters. The first is an output parameter that will store the handle to the XML document. Which is a variable we need to declare. The second variable is the XML document itself. From our previous query, we were able to store the XML document into the X variable. So we can use that variable and pass it into the prepared document store procedure, which will then return the handle to that document. And we could use the handle in our open XML query. There's one more thing we need to do. Since the SPXML prepared document loads the XML into memory, we need to remove it from memory when we're done. That's taken care of by the SPXML remove document store procedure. This store procedure takes one parameter, which is the handle to the document. So now when we run this, we get the product subcategory ID and the name in table form. 
Let's do another example. I want to retrieve the product elements. I'll move the window to here so we can see both windows at the same time. Let me first copy the query that we just did onto a separate line. The X path down to the product element is products and then product. The columns that I want returned are product ID, which is an int, name, the product number, and I'll return that as a varchar 100, the list price returned as a float, and modify date as date time. If I run this, I don't get any results. This is because the flag is set to 1, which indicates that the fields I'm looking for are attributes. However, these are elements, so I need to change this to a 2. Now that I've retrieved the data, I can insert them into tables. I'll create a couple tables on the fly. For subcategory, I'll insert into a new table called My Subcategories. For Product, I'll insert into a new table called My Products. Selecting from My Subcategory and my products will return their respective data. You can also select data from multiple levels from both attributes and elements within the same query. Let's take our last query and instead of just returning the product information, let's also return the data for our subcategory. Our flag is set to a 2, so the query is looking for elements. To indicate that these two fields are attributes, we need to alias the columns and prefix it with the at sign. Also, the product subcategory ID and name are two levels above product. The two periods tell it to go up a level, just like in DOS. And we need to do that twice. Let's run the query we get an error saying duplicate column name. This is because the name field for product subcategory and the name field for product is the same. We can change this to something else, product subcategory name. The results now have data from the subcategory level and the product level. This concludes the tutorial on how to load an XML document and read it like a table. The code I used in this video is available on my blog. I'll include a link to it in the video description. Thanks for watching.